In this tutorial, I'm going to do a basic label mockup onto a bottle using the 3D Revolve tool in Illustrator. And it's, act, it's a, an effective way to show quickly what a graphic may look like on a 3D shape. It's by no means very realistic, although you can bring this artwork into Photoshop or um, After Effects and uh, other programs if you want to put it into a realistic setting, maybe on a table with other things, food, etc. But for the most part, it's just a great testing tool to see how the label will look on a specific shape, especially if you have the shapes and you have a more specific outline of that shape, um, you can actually make quite an accurate revolve. It's just, it's still Illustrator, it still has the, that vector appearance to it, but it is quite handy when you're working through um, resolving the graphics for something and can be used as a, a good conceptual mock-up. Um, so what I have here is just some artwork for a label. So I have the cell face label itself, the cap. Um, so this would be the top of the cap. And then on this particular one, I'm going to color the neck green and the edge of the cap gray. So we have all the artwork and we also have the actual shape of the bottle. And what we're seeing here, this shape is what would be revolved into the full bottle. So if I was going to show the full bottle here. I'll just copy this over into some workspace. I'm using half because it's revolving around that axis, but I'll show you what it would look like. So this is the kind of a profile view of the full bottle, but the, res the revolve in the 3D tool works on an axis. So this edge this left edge is actually acting as the axis around which it will revolve. So before I do anything, I want to make sure that my artwork is set as symbols. And I also want to be sure that I'm not working with an outline or a stroke on the shape that I'm revolving. So in this case, I have a fill. I have a 5% black fill, and that's just going to give the bottle a light gray tone. And that can be changed later, but um, I don't want to use black because it'll just fill, just be a, a really large, um, a heavy uh, weight of black on which I'm putting the graphics. And really this is about having the graphics stand off a bit so I can just see how they're fitting. So I don't want to overwhelm the graphics with um, the black bottle. So I'm just using that light gray. But if I did have a stroke on this, so I'm going to put a black stroke there. If I had that stroke, that stroke actually gets, um, it works as a surface or additional surfaces when I do the 3D revolve. So where I may end up with five or six surfaces with just a fill, I end up with maybe uh, 30 when I use a, have the stroke on there because it's including inside and outside surfaces. It's a little uh, complicated. So the best thing to do really is just eliminate that stroke and make sure you're working with only a fill. And in fact, um, in this case, I'll probably be getting uh, six or seven surfaces because what deems a surface, the, the 3D tool deems all lines between vector points or between anchor points as a surface. So in this case, I have one surface across the top. The cap edge is a surface. And so that's two, three, four, and then the outside, five, six, that little curve at the bottom, and seven will be the bottom. This eighth surface is actually the axis that it's revolving around, so that's not counting as a surface. So you'll, you'll see what I mean when I actually revolve it. So we have that, fill only, no stroke, and then we also have to make sure that our artwork is saved as symbols. So here's the artwork, it's been created, and we want to test it on the mock-up, but we need symbols with which to map it on when we do the 3D Revolve. So we have to actually make our artwork into symbols, which is very easy. We have the Symbols panel open, so if you don't have that open, it'll be in your, um, your window menu. And I'm just going to drag the artwork into the Symbols panel. So this is grouped, and it's, this is the cell face label, so I'll just drag that into the symbols. 
And it's going to ask me, do you want to name it? Well, I'll, I'll name it cell face and I'm gonna make it a graphic, it's not a movie clip, and I'm gonna maintain the dynamic aspects of it. So that will let me do some editing later if I want to, using the direct select cursor and just being able to make some adjustments even after the effects have been applied. Um, I'll say okay, and then that symbol's in there. Now, once you've put something in and designated it a symbol, it's now deeming this a symbol as well. Your original artwork has been turned into a symbol. So if you don't want that, you will, you'll want to make a copy or at least make sure that you have an original copy of that artwork. Um, in this case, if I were to delete that symbol and it says delete instances, it would delete that one because I've deemed that a symbol. So that's why you want to have a backup. You can expand. If I go to delete that, it says expand instance instances, it would just turn that back into vector artwork and expand it. So you still do have it, but it's always good to have a copy just in case something doesn't work correctly or if you're converting paths, uh, type to paths to outlines, then of course you also wanna have a copy. So I'm just gonna go back to where that's in there and then I'm gonna add the others as well. So my cap face, and I'll name it graphic dynamic symbol. And then even this, even though it's just a color, we're still applying it. We're mapping it to the artwork as a symbol. So I'll put that in. And it's just dragging and dropping onto that symbols panel. And the cap edge. So all of our symbols are in, and I've made the copy of the bottle over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and extrude that, or revolve that. And I'll go to the effects, and you'll see in the, in the effects we have extrude. So if I was doing a box, for example, I would make a square and, or a rectangle, depending on how I wanted that box to be shaped. And then I would go through the extrude process where I would still be mapping on the artwork and we're gonna be using the Revolve. Now we have to make sure, of course, that we do have these symbols in first because it's all going to happen at the same time. We're not going to make the 3D shape and then go back and apply artwork. We're going to be applying that all in one go. So I'll go back to that 3D and Revolve. And we have several settings here. You can always play around with these. This is more about showing how we map that artwork, so I'm not gonna to do too much adjusting here. But you can see that you can get different light, um, choose where the light actually hits uh, the object differently and so on and to what intensities. But one thing you wanna make sure of is how you're setting the blend step. So mine, I usually just keep it at the default because I'm testing graphics on these mockups and 25 is complicated enough so it's enough blend steps that it looks pretty good but it's not so much that it's beyond renderability of my particular computer the higher in steps you go the finer the render is going to be and the more time it's going to take so 25 as a default is fine any lower and you can play around with it of course but any lower you'll see that the quality becomes quite poor um, pretty quickly so I've got that revolve. I'm not going to change the angle. If I click and drag on this item here, that will change the angle, but I can see a little bit of the top of my piece, which I want to because I have the cap, the cap face going on there. I can see a direct view of my cell face. So I'm happy with the angle right now for these purposes. I'll go to map artwork. So this is where we're going to be mapping what we turned into symbols onto the uh, the surfaces and you can see just in the preview and always make sure you have preview selected most computers now that we're running the software on can handle the preview and it's very helpful because it's showing you what's going to happen of course prior to actually activating it by clicking OK and I'm going to go map artwork now we'll see when we go in there we get the 
surfaces. So it's this has the seven surfaces. We counted those along the side there, the eighth being the axis, so that's technically not a surface. So it's created the revolve, the shape, and now we're going to be applying those symbols to the necessary surfaces. So the first surface we can see, it appears to be the top. It may be the bottom though, because we're not seeing it highlighted here. So we're not seeing anything being formally highlighted, so that's probably not a surface that we're going to be working with. So it's just, sometimes this takes a little getting used to, especially when you have a more complicated shape, which this isn't. Um, but I always flip through and just become acquainted with what the surfaces are before I actually start mapping. So you can see these look pretty much the same, but when I go here, now we can see this one. So what this is probably the bottom surface, the very bottom, which we can't actually see, so it's not showing us the highlight of that. So I go here, now that's showing us the top surface, and it's saying this is right there. So that'll be putting my... Um, my cap face on and then on this one we can't see that we can see maybe a little bit of it here so it's showing us that and then we can see the the face so this white area in this box here is what we're looking directly at right now where the whole label if i was to wrap a label right around this bottle it would take up all of that space and there's the shoulder of the bottle that we're not applying any graphic to. There's the neck and then the cap edge. So we're going to start here and we'll choose our cap face. And if you look in the preview, and this is another reason to have preview on so you can see how it's going to behave once it's mapped on, it's quite large. And that's because this isn't fitting the actual space. We have to be careful with this though because if you're if you have a graphic that isn't um, strictly sized, like this one, a circle to a circle, but isn't strictly sized in accordance with the actual shape, if you just choose scale to fit, it's going to skew that label or that component, that graphic component to um, fit whatever that area is and it's going to skew and misshape your graphics. So in this case I'm okay because it's circle to circle so I'll choose scale to fit. You can see it goes to the direct size, the actual size of that face and it's correctly showing on the cap there. And then I'll go, I won't say okay, if I say okay this will go back to my uh, settings here. So I'm just going to go to the next side. Not doing that, that's the lower part and there's our this is our cell face, so I'm going to choose cell face, and it'll bring in my artwork. And we can see here right now it's halfway into and halfway out of that space that we're seeing. So I'm just going to move it in a bit. I'm not going to go all the way in, and I'll make it a little smaller as well. I'm going to use my shift key to scale it down like we would a regular object in Illustrator, and then I'll just move it into place to center it a bit. And this takes some processing time, so my computer, it's not uh, super strong, super powerful, so it does take a little bit to process between the preview and things happening there, but it's not too bad. And so I'm a little bit uh, out of the space, but that's just to show um, how it sits on the bottle and give us a little bit of different perspective. but. It, as long as you know that this white space is what we're actually seeing, then you may want to bring your label fully into view. And that's dependent on whatever, however you're doing the mock-up and what you're testing or what you want to see. So I'll go to the next side. That's the shoulder. We're not doing anything there. And there's the neck. So we're doing the neck in green. So this has no graphic on it. This is just a colored box so I can choose scale to fit and not worry about any skewing on that. And I'll do the same for the cap edge. And I probably don't have to scale to fit, but I will just to fill the space there. And we'll say okay. Could adjust any other settings if I needed to. I'm not going to at the moment. And I'll actually, 
I'm actually going to go back for a moment to map art because I do want to show that if we did the cell face, so I'm just going back to where the cell face was at. And this is an example of where things get a little skewed because we're going back and it's a little confused there. It's, you can see it's showing right now, it's showing that surface. So I have to make sure that I go to the correct surface. So going back, sometimes it can trip you up a bit, but you want to make sure that you're on the, the correct surface. So we're back at the cell face and the cell face surface. And then I want to show you in this case, if I was to select scale to fit, this is something you have to be aware of. You choose that and it's going to fill the entire space. And you can see that what that's done is actually skew the label. That's taken the whole label, wrapped it entirely around the bottle, and it's in fact distorted our graphic. So we really want to be careful that if you're using scale to fit, that you're using it in such a way that it's appropriate. It's, going, it's not going to skew your graphic. So I'm going to clear that and redo that face. So I'll just bring it a little in. I'm going to scale it down using my shift key. The shift key still applies here in the mapping window. It's taken a little longer because I've started doing some extra things here, but we'll get it located there. And we've got our cap face. I'm going to make sure of that edge. That edge looks a little funky, and I think that's because I was at that last and didn't fully. So now I'm going to go back here. So now I'm just making a mess of it. Okay, so I got to fix this again. There we go. So now I'll go back to that cap edge because I want to make sure that, that was correct because when I came back into it, I applied the cell face to it. So we'll go back cap edge and scale to fit because there's no graphic to be distorted there. I just want to fill that space. We have our cap face on the top there. So we're all good and we'll say, okay. And I'm fine with everything here. I'll say, okay. And there we go. There's our mock-up, but it's still under the influence of effects. It's not, it's not completely, um, fully vectorized because if I do command Y here we'll see it's still the original shape it's just that original shape with an effect applied so if you want to fully vectorize this then you'll select it and go up to object and expand appearance and that will turn that into a proper vector wireframe doesn't look as great anymore because it's it's just assembling this as vector and you can see every aspect of the the lighting effect and gradient has been turned into um, segments if i do command y we see how complicated that wireframe is but that at least changed it into a vector and now you can select it and rotate it and do what you need to do with it um, but it does undo that effect. So if you wanted to try another, just making sure you have your original revolve half as a copy, you can start working with it again and go through the mapping process. You already have your symbols there. So that's a pretty basic coverage of applying a label to a shape. Um, again, if you're doing a box, you're doing an extrude in the effect. Um, it still happens the same way. Just make sure your graphics are symbols first. And then as you go through the 3D development of that shape, map the artwork at the same time. Go into the mapping. Be sure of your surfaces. Usually this takes a little bit of a learning curve. Just to understand what's going on. But it's really quite simple. And it's a good way to make some quick mock-ups.